Hello guys and girls and welcome to Board Now's Classic Movie Reviews. So this is a new idea I had where I, I thought I'd um, review a series of old or, or just classic movies in general and give my overall thoughts on them and impressions. So this will sit beside my more cult sci-fi type or, or horror related films reviews um although there might be some crossover obviously some of these films might have a cult feel to them but now i should just explain this is of course i'm going to be reviewing um las dalablik by henry george clouseau so as the video title says but i should just explain about the series then just because it says classic films i'm that's not giving away my feelings on on the movies um i'm gonna you know pick out some films which are considered classics by many and this obviously fits into that category but then review them and give my own verdict you know some of them i might not be so keen on i might find overrated and we'll see see what happens but yeah so this is the first one it's an idea i had and i thought it'd be a good one to start off with i i picked up the criterion edition just the other day there's the the really great cover i, I love that shot one of the most iconic shots of the whole film probably the most pretty cool edition lots of nice little features so Dilabilic, which means devil in France, apparently, which is um, an appropriate title. So I'm going to get into this. Um, I believe this was my first time watching it. Um, I'd heard so much about it and I knew certain elements and certainly... Well, the twist, although there there's a couple of twists at the end, and I didn't know everything that was going to happen, so that so that was a nice surprise. But yeah, believe it or not, I think I know there's there was an American remake in the '90s, I believe, with Sharon Stone in um, Chaz Proletary, and I've seen that, and I mean, at the time, I didn't have much of an opinion of it i think i think because i was at an age where i didn't really critique films that much then i probably thought it was okay at the time but you know now looking back i'm sure it, it's not really that great or certainly people say that but yeah and trying to remake such a renowned classic is always you're always on dodgy ground and I think my impression of the American remake is that they did it is that they stuck really close to the thing to the original the Clouseau classic so maybe came off as a bit pointless but anyway I mean I'll probably watch that at some point for for some contrast so I'm going to get into talking about the movie, the original. So this is from 1955. It was Clouseau's follow-up to The Wages of Fear, which is probably his other best well, best known film. Um, and that that appeared, or that came out just two years before. And very influential film in its own right. I think that and Dialogic is probably two of the most inferential films of all times in terms of what they inspired and what followed and just how ahead of the time there was in different kind of genres. I mean, they're both thrillers in their own way, but obviously um, Wages of Fear, sorry, is this classic type sprawling sort of adventure um I mean, a character-driven sort of study and what have you. And I think that's what puts it apart. And that's, you really get into the characters of that, which is a classic thing in a thrill. You know, it really puts the stakes up there. But obviously, yeah, you can see how a plot like In the Wages of Fear, which I'll probably review on another episode but you can see how that would influence a lot of kind of adventure and action cinema even though 
wages of fear itself is very sort of different to that um and then this one was really ahead of its time in what it did for thrillers what it did you know there's a horror element necessarily a moment of dread i'm probably giving away my feelings just by saying this in a way but yeah it, it's 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 worth pointing out then i did a bit of read up and it turns out then Cluzo auctioned this script he brought the rights to basically stop Hitchcock from making it Hitchcock had his eye on it and then Hitchcock it's been said then this was the inf um, inspiration for Psycho which came in 1960 so just a few years later so really ahead of its time We've got the main players, so Simone Sigonot plays Nicole. Um, we have Valerie Cluchot, director of the, or oh, oh, sorry, wife of the director. She plays the part of Christina. And Paul Meseris, uh, I'll go with, probably completely wrong. He plays Michael. And we also have Charles Vernon making a memorable cameo as Alfred. He's like the, the sort of private detective in the movie. Really distinct part. Um, and again, you can see a classic sort of private eye in his character, a real sleuth, a real um, sort of very comical, but down to earth and sharp as a whip sort of, um, sort of old fashioned private eye who would, you know, that trend would become very popular in American cinema and TV when you think of Columbo. I mean, uh, I'm not saying Columbo was inspired by this, but you know, you can see, you can see the early sort of um, character in, in this, then that would become a running sort of trend in movies and TV. So I'll set the film up first. So, um, it's set in a boarding school in France and basically you have the guy who runs the place or at least owns it, the sort of headmaster, he, he is Michael and he is having an affair with the Christina character played by Vera Clouseau and at the same time he's married to um, Nicole, her character and so there's this tension there. He's really cruel to both women, essentially. You know, it, it's sort of seen as, you know, that Christina is the new kind of, in a way, the, the new thing in his life and a bit of a plaything. And he obviously, in different ways, he treats both women really, really horribly and he takes them for granted. He sort of sort of sticks it in, in um sort of rubs it in nicole's face the fact that he's seeing this sort of younger in a way version of her um and he, he has no interest in the school essentially all the kids there they're sort of just like it's just a property to him he just enjoys having the riches and having the sort of power of of, of running the place and you know he, he's very cool to the kid as well i mean i think this this guy is this character is is essentially without making him sound cartoonish but is it's this really great sort of scream villain um he's truly terrifying he's very sort of deadpan very cold and icy and yeah just through some of his actions and some of his phrases he's just like you can really see he runs these women down into the ground really in both senses um so so the setup of the film is that nicole and christina sort of band together there's this sort of female solidarity and they decide they've been pushed too far by michael and they decide to hatch a, a plot to kill him essentially um which they pull off but then there's complications when they're getting rid of the body which they do in like the sort of the school kind of pond um and they have this plan and you know obviously initially it go the body you know 
sinks to the bottom but gradually it will rise up and they'll find him and and because they've sort of um like you know sort of poisoned his drink sort of thing they're they're banking on the fact that it'll just look like he was you know he, he was drunk and sort of out of it and that he kind of killed himself sort of thing so that's the plot anyway but then there's complications with certain things that happen when the body goes missing crucially and and that's as much as i'll tell you really without spoilers so i will say then i won't give away everything this won't be full spoilers because i think it, it, it'll be a good idea to leave you with some surprises as i said particularly the end of the film but yeah i, I will go into some detail about the film and I think you're probably guessing my overall impressions. I I, I think it's a great film. I, I really loved it, as I said, ahead of its time. I think the pacing is just so spot on. It really takes its time in building the tension, building the characters. I think there's some really great dialogue, some great performances. And he really sets the mood, the sort of icy tone. And slowly the horror elements come in and this sense of dread. And I think really interesting characters. I think, you know, the fact it is called uh, or, or the title means devil sort of thing. It obviously in a very obvious way can be referring to the husband um, or Michael um, and just how nasty and mean and, and just pure evil he is when you see some of his actions and just how much he doesn't care and uses the women then that's quite striking but I, I think also one of the profound things about the film I think in some ways it could be seen as quite feminist because as I said female solidarity although sort of a twist there without giving it away um, but also this sense then women are put through the ringer in society particularly back then and you know cruelly treated by men and that there's only so much they can take before they snap before they turn it around and sort of become animalistic sort of thing um, become almost like the evil themselves if you like so that's something I took away but also I guess there's a classic morality sort of tale to it and that's the fact that essentially you know if you give in to it if you um, become like 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 the evil like obviously Michael in this um, because I think they do get overcome with it particularly the Christina character and that's quite a nice subversion because actually at the start of the film I think you imagine that the Nicole character is the more dangerous or the more threatening. She's the one pushing the plot actually, the the scheme to kill off the husband. It's Christina who's more nervous about it and Nicole sort of um, takes charge sort of thing which makes sense later on. But, yeah, I think there's there's that sense of morality about it, about if you if you if you're overcome by this, if you sink to that level, then, yeah, kind of that's a bad thing. And it sort of turns it around and makes you think about these things, um, because obviously no matter how terrible Michael is to them, you know, it obviously doesn't excuse their plan, their actions. And it plays that really nicely, really balanced, how you do get sense of, of light. I mean, obviously with Michael, there's no light and dark, really. That's pretty much down the middle sort of thing. But with the women there are, I mean, it sort of sets up Christina as this really caring, nurturing person you know she she's really because they both teach in the school and Christina you can tell she's really popular with the kids and there's some cute little humor with the kids the school kids or 
obviously this boarding school who kind of you know a couple of them have a crush on her and one of them buys her a present and yeah so he he has a close bond with her sort of thing particularly and it sort of takes in this sort of um you know sweet innocence of youth and what have you but yeah she's well loved in the school when she truly cares about the kids sort of thing so that sets up what's going to happen in the film quite nicely sets up her character and the contrast between her character by the end of the film and i think another thing about it which really you can see inspired a lot of horror and comedy following on from this and obviously psycho is a good example is the fact that there are subtle moments of humor sort of sprinkled in particularly in the first half of the film so you get a group or a couple of like other like male teachers who kind of they're sort of on the sidelines if you like in one scene and they're sort of making comments about the whole drama of you know Michael and the two women and it's almost like this sort of commentary like from the peanut gallery and so there there are you know moments like that and sort of funny lines and I think that did inspire Psycho because one of the things you remember about Psycho is how it throws you through a loop in the second half of the film how you're sort of set up for a different sort of film in the first half i mean there's a lot of humor which that has become a staple of some horror some thrillers you know just you will have jokes and moments of humor just to balance out the darker stuff the more dramatic stuff but obviously with psycho it, it was done yeah as a way to throw the viewer off sort of thing and so in a way you can see this doing that um quite an early example and there's some beautifully sort of haunting music very dramatic i mean the opening it's really really subverts your expectation it is you you get this dramatic music and you also get some really murky rain that comes over the credits so i like that sort of setting up this sort of sense of the gothic this sense of the dread as we first sort of come in and you get an explanation for the tile which i thought was very nice so sort of commentary to the audience um and it's a very different sort of film from wages of fear as i said um it's you know it is a bit more downplayed but um gradually you get more and more into the dramatic and the sense of things unraveling and i i think it's one of those classic sort of hard boil you know sort of thrillers sort of mysteries where it's so well planned out every little detail sort of counts and you will get I think in the way of classic cinema sort of early visual like signifier set up sort of shots that will be thinking ahead it will be setting up something that is important later in the film which at first you don't think maybe is going to be they just seem like incidental shots but then you realize ah oh, that was setting something up so an example of that, we get an early shot of the pond where, of course, they're going to bury the body. And that be, that first shot where I believe Christina looked, sort of glazes off into the distance at the pond becomes a crucial thing um, because that's going to come back into play. And then when they, they come back in the middle of the night because they've to the boarding school because they've sort of committed the act out of town obviously in another city and they've driven the body back and um so when they get back they sort of she stares at the pond again sort of thing and she has these glazed over sort of eyes so again all these setup shots of how important the pond is going to be um this sort of like I was never quite sure if it was swimming pool or pond. I got the impression it was like just a school pond, but 
I could be wrong. Um, but that becomes a whole sort of teaser sort of thing and tension as, as Christina just becomes fixated on, on the body in the pond sort of thing and what's happening, is it going to be sort of pulled up and just her guilt, I guess, and the paranoia. So, you know, she'll be in class in the middle of the day teaching and the class will be like doing whatever reading and she just glances over, she wanders over to the window and watches the pond and watches the, the, the you know, the guy sort of cleaning it and is just really, although it's part of the plan, you know, she's nervous about the body being revealed and then when it's not revealed, she's sort of thinking what's going on and ultimately it obviously disappears. Um, but I do like the performance from Valerie Clouseau and just how vulnerable she is just how nervous and fragile her performance is and the way she moves the way she walks is is really effective and as the film builds and the tension builds you really get these sort of zombie like eyes from her like she's fixated she's disorientated and slowly and slowly her, her mental state you know unravels sort of thing and it really builds to an impressive sort of um, climax with her character. And you get other sort of visual setup shots, like you obviously get the suitcase being chucked down the stairs and the camera focuses on that. And it does feel a bit like a stage play with all these bouncing about and different objects and quite dense sort of sort of shots and tight interior sort of shots um but it, as i said it does have a cinematic life as well but yeah it does feel like a condensed sort of quite claustrophobic stage play at times as well but yeah you do get these established shots which are then setting up important things later on in the film I like the touch of Nicole early on where she's wearing the sort of um, the shades, the sunglasses around school and it's very sort of um, film noir, that sort of look, you know, to have the femme fatale type character in shades. But also I think it's kind of making the point that she is sort of hiding her face from the world, you know, she can't sort of face this because her husband's, you know cheating with with this other woman and it's in public it's in the school sort of thing it's being flaunted in her face so i think very literally she is kind of hiding her her emotions her face with you know behind the shade sort of things so i like that all I like all that stuff. We also get the Prince William um, jacket or suit, um, which the, Michael is wearing and he makes a point of. And again, this is quite an hysterical sort of line. Although he's really nasty about it, you know, he, at one point when they're having a fight, he, he, um, he calls Christine an idiot saying, you know, you, you ruined my Prince Prince William, Prince of Wales, sorry, it is. I, I'll get it right in Prince of Wales jacket. Um, but again, it's this cruelty, it's this banality. And it also sets that up because the Prince of Wales jacket becomes important in the plot later on when it randomly shows up and some it, it has been delivered to the school by someone and that's when things start staring and they think well it's part of them thinking he might still be alive or but yeah part of the building mystery but the fact that that gets mentioned quite early in the film as well and i like the the little sort of hurdles that are built up so when they first, they're obviously transporting the body back to the boarding school to try and bury it and sort of finish their plan off. And you get these little hurdles that are thrown up. So, for example, um, they get stopped and there's like this drunk sort of French... I think he's a soldier. Yeah, he was a soldier, French soldier, who tries to. He says, "You know, can you give me a lift?" Sort of thing, and 
and you know because he's drunk and a bit you know off they they don't want to do it but also there's the obvious fact they've got the body in the boot and at one point he almost forces his way into the back of the the truck and so I like that that these little moments of tension where the body could potentially be be sort of revealed could be someone could stumble upon it and that their their plan will be ruined sort of thing so these things kind of build stakes build tension so so all all that's really well done it's a really well thought out script the script is just brilliant and the pacing is is just so perfect the timing of things and the reveal and and as i said i really like the alfred character he really has some great lines he's this really sort of old school um very grounded very wise very humorous sort of you know sort of private eye and he does steal some some scenes and i think we get some example of just how the women are overtaken by rage how they're sort of pushed to the edge and how they how ruthless and cold they become um so obviously I showed you the cover of the DVD earlier, so we get the famous bath scene where, obviously that they've drugged him sort of thing, but you know to make sure he's dead, they they go to extremes. You know they they like put a sort of a suit. Um, there's a statue sort of, sort of thing, which is quite comical, and they put a couple of things over him and and they have to press him his head down sort of in, in the bath sort of thing and yeah so that that becomes a really extreme a nerve in sort of scene but the fact that they do it in the bath and this is a genius sort of element and again i'm not going to give away the spoiler of the ending and what have you but the that part of the plan which bearing in mind Nicole has sort of hatched I think that part of the plan is is part of the genius of the twists at the end because it does sort of set set them up and and it's one of those it's pretty much foolproof when you look back over the film and then how it ends I think you realize then yeah that's logical that that all adds up there's no real sort of loose end to it um and also it sets up the bath scene at the end because that becomes this thing where where he sort of rises and and that's where you can see the horror element sort of thing and and the last you know it's a couple of moments in particular of this film are just so so chilling and unnerving and actually you know the sort of him rising out of the bath you know you can see that as maybe inspiring maybe halloween or something with the michael myers character the way he rises you know he, he sits straight up sort of thing and so that sort of veers into horror sort of territory this sort of very um very slippery very um yeah so, sort of unhuman sort of element it's very the dead eyes and uh, just the disconnection and the the scary sort of vi um, figure and the sort of shadows and use of light and everything as i said it does have a, a sort of a gothic sort of, the, the way they use the school and the surrounding shots that it does have this very gothic type of feel and aesthetic and sort of mood at times when it needs to be so i mean thinking of it i can see the sort of horror elements as well as the thriller elements but it's a really satisfying film as i said the performances are really good particularly valerie clouseau i think is tremendous it has some really interesting themes it plays with your emotions i think the twists are just some of the best you'll ever see it's really cleverly played and again i'm not going to give it away but i think you you will be satisfied with the ending and 
surprised by the ending. I mean, the only thing you'll probably cotton on to is the fact that he's not, not really dead, you know, because that's kind of, you know, the body going missing in the middle of the film. And then, I mean, there could be another explanation, but I think you suspect that he's probably not going to be dead. But there's another couple of twists which will really throw you through the loop and the way they're explained and what have you is it is just great i think it's a tremendous story a great bit of cinema and really ahead of its time i think it is a classic and i think it deserves its its sort of status and it's it's a nice companion piece i think to to watch alongside Wages of Fear, because they're both great films in their own right, but very different sort of films. So, yeah, that's my review of Diabolic. I will give it a review, a, sorry, a rating, as I normally do with film reviews. And I will, I'll do it out of 10, actually, and I think that's the way I'll rate these films. And I'm going to give it a straight 10. I, I think it really holds up. I think it is flawless pretty much. I can't really find a fault. I'm sure if I looked hard enough I could. But what's the point in that? But no, it, it's a very good film. Really ahead of its time. Really masterful. And everything just comes together. It's just so well plotted and thought out. With, as I said, engaging, interesting characters and themes. And crucially, it pays everything off. The ending really delivers. And, and that's a big thing in a thriller. I mean, if the ending doesn't land, if it doesn't quite stick, if it stumbles a bit, if you're not quite convinced by the twists or there's just something off, then that could, that could overwrite a lot of what the film has set up. And it makes it not such a great film i mean sometimes the ending of a film isn't that important or a twist i think people can overrate twists or overrate how important they are but yeah i think in this sort of thriller uh, they are really important they are significant and i think this one just lands it perfectly you get the perfect sort of gut punch twice in a way and it all adds up. It's it's just really genius stuff. So I'm as I said, I'll go with a ten. I think this is a perfect film. But I will pick some other films which maybe I wouldn't give a ten to. Make it a bit interesting, you know, some films which are considered classics, but maybe in my opinion are overrated and don't quite deserve to be called classics. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I've got some thoughts on uh, something like Taxi Driver I'll do in, in, in a future review. And so many. I mean, if you have an idea or a suggestion for a classic movie review I could do, then please stick them below in the comments. And since I'm going to be doing a bunch of horror movies for Halloween for the month of October, I might even stick a classic horror movie review for that but a lot of content coming up on the channel but that has been my review of diabolic or les diabolic the devil and please let me know your thoughts on the film below and also my review but thank you for listening i'll be back with another review soon goodbye